My name is Rachel Rofe. I created this show because I wanted to help you see that if you have a choice, you can choose a better life. If you're listening to this podcast, you're in a pretty fortunate position. You have free will, ability to connect to the internet, and access to all kinds of new education. This podcast is meant to help you make the most of your good fortune. We talk with all kinds of people here from all walks of life because I want you to see that no matter what your situation, there's always a way to create a life that you're proud of. Hello, today's episode is all about how to plan for the new year, and it is especially helpful, I think, for either existing or aspiring entrepreneurs or business owners, and it might help you if you're not, but I just know that because I'm an entrepreneur, that's generally how I think, the questions that I ask, and that's kind of how this is structured. So maybe you get some nuggets from it if you're not, definitely if you are. I'm posting this podcast around the end of 2014, and you can use it at any time. It's always a really great idea to get a good handle on what you want to create, especially if you're listening to this towards the end of the year. I think it's really convenient timing for structuring out a template for the year ahead to make sure that you have a year that you're as proud of as possible. The questions that I'm going to mention here, so questions that I invite you to answer, are things that I'm actually using in my personal mastermind. I'm using for myself. Uh, tomorrow, I actually have scheduled with my mastermind. A friend and I are leading a few hours of just taking time for everyone in our mastermind to answer these questions and to give each other feedback. So this is my personal process. And I'm going to read through questions here. It might take a bit of time for you to do because basically I'll give you the questions and I I invite you to take five to ten minutes for each one and just answer them and potentially go and get feedback on them. You know, of course it's going to take time because you're reviewing an entire year beforehand and then you're planning for a year, so it should take time. I want you to take some time to really get clear on what worked for you, what didn't work for you, and what you want to create, because this is a whole entire year out. I'll be going through the questions here. It's also going to be on rachelrofay.com for your review, so you can see everything written out without having to stress about answering it all here. Let's get going. The first thing that I recommend is go through your last year before you even move on to what you want to create. You know, I know a lot of us, we want to just move forward, we want to move quick, we have exciting ideas about what's coming up, but it's really important to take time to process what happened last year. We learn every day, we have gotten so much experience in the past year, and there's always really good clues from the year before that are going to help you moving forward. So that can be identifying what worked, what didn't work, what you liked doing, what you didn't like, and just general things that you learned. You learn a lot from history, so we don't want to skip this part. So questions to ask yourself in the year-end review. First, ask yourself, what were some of the biggest lessons that you learned this year? Just list them out. What were some great things that you learned? And identifying these is really helpful because when you are able to take time to digest the different lessons that you learned, then you won't make any mistakes associated with them again because you'll have assimilated and be able to know next time how to handle certain things that come up. Ask yourself, what are you most proud of this year? What are some of the things that you feel really, really great about? Just take some time to acknowledge yourself. What were some areas that felt extremely on point and easy for you? And then ask yourself, why was this the case? Were the things that felt really good for you because, for example, you were working in your zone of genius, or you had a partner that really helped, or you had someone that you were outsourcing to that really helped, you had affiliates, just identify what worked well and why. And then alternatively, what were some things that drove you crazy or didn't work well? And how could those things be changed? So if you had, for example, customer service nightmares, why did they not work well? Could you hire somebody else? Could you make sure that you have more people on hand for when you release new products because there's going to be more emails? Just identify what you can do to change them. Then, what was your gross profit last year? Check that out. Check out what your expenses were and what your net profit was because it's always good to get a real handle on exactly what happened financially. And then check that out. When you're looking at your expenses first, are there things that could be cut next year? And which of your activities provided the most returns? Ideally, this would be money-wise, but if you're still in incubation stage, then you might look at what created the most traffic or other opportunities And list out the top five activities that you did that provided the most returns. 
and then ask what pet projects could I have cut out? So were there things that you wanted to do, you enjoyed doing, but maybe they didn't really show much return on investment for either your time or your money? So you do that and then identify your present. So it's important to identify the present too because your next year, your daily activities, they're not going to miraculously overhaul just because you're planning for something new. So we need to see where you are now and then build upon it. So first, look at where you've been spending your time. So on an average 24-hour day, write out wherever your time goes on average. So this includes unavoidable things that we typically don't schedule. That can be driving time, driving your kids to places, or driving to the gym, time with your family or your significant other, time spent cleaning, cooking, and then TV, internet, any time that you spend, and then also different job tasks. Break it down on average. So how much time you're spending on email, how much time you spend copywriting. Let's say you don't copyright, for example, every single day, but you spend two hours on it a month. Well, then you would break it down to 30 minutes per week, which would be maybe six minutes a day, whatever it is. Usually I don't like to get that small, but usually like 15 minute chunks or better, I think are good. And then just write out how your average day is spent. Then check out those 24 hours and see, are there things that could be cut there? Are there things that you're spending time on that you don't need to be? Also, are you spending your time on projects that are creating the most revenue? So it might be that you're spending the bulk of your time on pet projects, for example, that are not in your top five activities providing the most returns. So this will often be really, really helpful. Then you also want to look and see what time can be cut to make way for new goals in the time coming up. So once you have that, now we're going to start planning for the upcoming year. Ask yourself first, what is your personal mission? Why are you interested in having a business? Or even if you're not doing this from a business perspective, what do you stand for? That's going to really help you shape your new goals. Also ask yourself how you want to feel in the upcoming year. Danielle Laporte really popularized core desired feelings. And the premise behind those is We all have goals for certain reasons, right? So let's say you want to make a certain amount of money. Is that because you want to feel freedom? Is it because you want to feel respect or excitement? We always chase goals because we want certain feelings. So identifying those feelings is going to help because sometimes you don't even need to make certain goals happen. You just need to figure out how to feel those feelings. Understand that however you want to feel, it's not going to always be the case, but It'll be helpful just to get a good primer for for what you want to feel. Also ask yourself if you have a word for the year or create a word for the year. This word should be a base for the upcoming year. So just something that you can help make decisions with and something that you're always sorting for. So for example, if you decide that your word for the year is ease, then you think about ease and think about, am I making decisions in line with the value of ease? And if you're feeling stressed, what can you do to introduce more ease? So other words might be excited, joyful, magic, balance, whatever you think will really help you for the upcoming year. And as a bonus, if you want to do something that helps remind you of that, that would be great too. So maybe there's a song that reminds you of your word, or you create a collage of pictures that remind you of your word, or you put a desktop wallpaper on your computer of that word. I just find that whenever we have something in mind, something to sort for, it's a lot easier to actually make that happen in our lives because, you know, it's just whatever our attention is on. Also ask yourself what you would like to let go of. So if there's any limiting beliefs that you think you can let go of, any old stories, projects not serving you, what would you like to just cut out? Then ask yourself what your income goals are for next year. And then what do you need to make your income goal happen? So specifically, I would make two to five goals that you would like to take on this year. I would make SMART goals, which are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So list those out, then ask yourself, why are those goals important to me? And then do they make sense according to what worked well from last year? After you figure out what your goals are, it would be really helpful. It's optional, of course, but it would be helpful to go through and get feedback from coaches, mentors, or people in your mastermind, an accountability partner, whomever, just to make sure that you are scheduling things that make sense for you. Then Take your two to five big goals and plot them into your calendar so that they're actually there, you can see them. What I like to do next is ask myself, how 
will I make it inevitable that these things are going to happen? So you might even want to take time to plot that too, which is taking your big goals and then breaking them down into action steps and putting them into your calendar. So if you want more help on this, go into my podcast. I have another podcast on goal setting, and then I also have a book. It's rachelrofe.com slash goalbook. It's, I think, $2.99, and it goes over uh, very clearly how you can go and break down goals and then get them onto your calendar. But also ask yourself, how many vacations or days off would you like to take this year? And then plot those in, too, because especially for entrepreneurs, it's so easy to, to just work, 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 work. So I find that once you put things in your calendar, it actually happens. So these are the questions that I would ask from a business sense. You can go and convert these into other things, so you can use it for goals for your health or your relationship or anything. Just use the questions that make sense. But Overall, I think this helps provide a really great template for structuring your next year, and I really do recommend that you take some time, take a couple hours, because planning is always just part of the most important thing that you can do to make sure that you have a good year coming up, because if you don't know where you're going, then obviously you'll never get there. I hope this helps. If you have comments, questions, anything, feel free to shout out on social media or rachelrofe.com, and I would love to hear from you. All right, have a phenomenal day and an awesome, awesome upcoming year. Thank you so much for listening to A Better Life. You can find all show notes for this episode at rachelrofe.com. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe so you can automatically get access to all new shows. Let's also connect. Just go onto Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram slash Rachel Rofe, and we can talk there. The opinions of all guests here are their own, and I'm not necessarily endorsing any of them. I do want to give you perspective, though. And always remember, if you have a choice, choose a better life.